In the supercar world, there's maybe no better combination than a roof that comes off and an engine that howls. <laughs> Lamborghini. In the Huracan Evo Spider and Aventador SVJ Roadster, the Italian Mark builds two of the most exciting drop-top supercars on sale today. The Evo is the car the Huracan should have been all along, with rear-wheel steering, clever torque vectoring, retuned suspension, trick aero, an updated interior and the engine from the Performante, the Evo turns the underwhelming Huracan into a world-class supercar. Its powered folding hood retracts in 17 seconds, exposing you to the elements and the full force of the V10. With four-wheel drive, 0-62 takes 3.1 seconds, while the top speed is 202 miles per hour. The price? £238,000. The Aventador SVJ is the baddest version of Lamborghini's monstrous V12 supercar. With less weight, more power, a reworked chassis and the most aggressive styling of any production road car out there, it's a fitting farewell to the Aventador nameplate. There's no powered roof here, you remove the two composite panels by hand. Four-wheel drive helps the SVJ reach 62 miles per hour in just 2.9 seconds. It'll run on to 218 miles per hour, but you'll pay for it. The SVJ Roadster costs almost £390,000. Only 800 will be built. The Huracan Evo's 5.2-litre V10 delivers 640 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. Torque is rated at 443 pound-foot. It's the same basic unit you'd have found in the Gallardo and it's still used by the Audi R8, but here it's in its highest state of tune. The gearbox is a 7-speed dual clutch. The Aventador SVJ Roadster's V12 is just sensational. It displaces 6.5 litres and produces 770 horsepower at 8,500 RPM. Torque is rated at 531 pound-foot. The gearbox, meanwhile, is an ancient robotized manual paddle shift. It's often been the most frustrating thing about the Aventador. Start off in the small, slow, cheap one. Well, it's all relative. Huracan Evo. I didn't love the previous Huracan. The Huracan Performante was a brilliant car, and now this Evo, it's such a good device, I have to say. Let's start with the engine. When you fire it up and then through the mid range, it's got this bassy, deep, almost offbeat quality to it. But then when you get it through about 7,000 RPM, it explodes. It's got this incredible climactic moment all the way to the red line at about 8,500. It's a wild engine. And with the roof off, it feels like it's just over your ear. You feel so closely connected to the engine and it makes it such a core part of the whole experience. Wow! You have to use the revs. You need to run it all the way through to 8,500 RPM and the car feels so quick. Such sharp throttle response as well. And the gear ratio is long, so you feel the engine ripping through each ratio. Wow, it's such a great thing. And the twin clutch gearbox, superb, really quick, really smooth. In Corsa mode, I'll show you now. Corsa mode, bang, bang. They've engineered this thump into the gear shift, so you get a big whack in the back on the up change. It's completely pointless, but it's really good fun. Earlier Huracans were quite one-dimensional machines. Always had this amazing engine, but they just weren't that engaging to drive, not that thrilling. They tended to be quite nose-led. They just weren't that memorable. This thing is such a big improvement with the changes they've made to the suspension, the four-wheel drive system, the torque vectoring, the steering, rear wheel steering, everything. It's such a big step on. And it just means that it feels like a much more malleable, adjustable, three-dimensional machine to drive. 
It's a game changer for the Huracan. The steering, on earlier models, it was whether you had the normal steering or the dynamic steering, it was just blunt. It was synthesized. You didn't really have that much confidence in where you were placing the car. Now there's still a distinct video game quality to it. It's not super talkative, it's not really connected. But it is intuitive, there's no slack in it. So you position the car with such confidence. Really good grip, such a responsive, darty front axle. Massive traction with four wheel drive, rock solid body control. Dynamically, it's a difficult car to find fault with. Something like a McLaren rear wheel drive, hydraulic steering. That's a much more connected machine. You feel totally at one with a McLaren. But this car, you just take it by the scruff of the neck and fling it down the road with so much confidence. It's such a stable and secure car. Consistent grip, really good body control. It's a very impressive device. It's not just effective and capable, it's also fun to drive, it's rewarding, it's engaging. There's so much to like about it. Even the brake pedal, you get such good immediate response the moment you apply any pressure to the brake pedal. It's so much better than the original Hurricane. It almost deserves its own name. So if that's what the smaller, slower, cheaper one is like, what's that Aventador SVJ going to be like? In isolation, the Huracan Evo is an exciting and theatrical supercar, but it's nothing compared to the Aventador SVJ Roadster. If anyone ever tells you Lamborghini supercars are all the same, punch them in the face. They're really not. This thing is a totally different animal to that Huracan Evo. It's almost scary to drive. We'll come to that. Let's talk about the engine. That Huracan V10, it's such a sharp, responsive thing. There seems to be no inertia in it. It just spins out so quickly. This enormous V12, it's a less responsive thing, or certainly right at the bottom of the rev range. It's less responsive. It takes a little bit more time and a bit more throttle to wake it up, to get it moving. But then through the mid-range and round to the top end, wow, it explodes. It's such a fearsome engine. There's nothing else like it out there. Wow. The way it pulls at the top of third gear, all the way around to the better part of 9,000 RPM, it's like being strapped to a rocket. I don't think I've ever felt anything like it in a road car before. It's incredible, so fast. You just arrive at your braking point way before you think you're going to, and then you're jumping on the brakes just trying to slow the thing down. This is such a good reminder, this car, of why it's a shame that everything's going turbocharged. A high revving, normally aspirated engine. God, it's all I want. Whereas the Huracan's V10 is quite a bassy, almost gruff engine. This V12 is musical. It's so sweet. That Huracan engine is like death metal. This Aventador SVJ V12, it's like an orchestra, but an orchestra on acid. What's strange is that this car, despite being a far more extreme machine than its sibling, it's not louder. And actually, you feel closer to the engine in the Huracan. It's a strange thing but I love having the roof off and hearing this V12 at its best. It's stunning. This gearbox, once you're up and running, it's okay. It's at low speeds and it's frustrating. It's this ancient, 
really old school single clutch paddle shift gearbox. The dual clutch item in the Huracan feels three or four generations newer. And there are times in this car, particularly in Corsa mode, where you pull for the change, the up change, and the whack in the back is so violent, it almost upsets the car. That Huracan feels about the right size for these roads. This Aventador is just a bit bigger, and so you find yourself working hard to position the car. It's a bit like flying a fighter jet around a football stadium. You feel constrained, but my God, it's so exciting. Until today, the most exciting car I'd ever driven on this road was a McLaren P1. I think that's changed. It steers in a similar way, this car. Slightly synthesized, slightly computer gamey. But you position the car with real confidence. The brake pedal isn't quite there. There's much more dead travel, so you don't get that immediate confidence-inspiring response. Massive grip, really good traction, just no body roll whatsoever. I never really loved the Aventador, never really got on with it. But this thing, this thing is one of the most exciting road cars I've ever driven. Wow! I drive it and I'm so flooded with adrenaline that when I stop and get out, after five minutes, I just feel drained. I feel like I've got no energy. There aren't many road legal cars that do that to you. Road legal. It's amazing that you can just walk into a showroom and buy one of these things. Wow. Between the rain showers here in North Wales, both Lamborghinis were spectacular to drive, thanks almost entirely to their incredible engines. Engines that you feel closer to than ever with the roofs peeled away. The normally aspirated engine is an endangered species these days, but Lamborghini has committed to keeping them alive for as long as it can. For that, I think Lamborghini deserves all the credit in the world. Thank you for watching. Please comment below and remember to subscribe to the Piston Heads YouTube channel. And don't forget to head to pistonheads.com for your daily hit of car news, reviews and stories.